All right, so our next segment is the Octavius Corner. I thought you were going to introduce this whole way. Octavius Corner, and today I'm going to be talking about um, HIV awareness. I said, um, sorry. HIV awareness and the importance of knowing your status. So I was researching some things online and I came up with some t statistics and I also saw that Kelly Rowland was doing this thing, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. But every week, 7,000 young women are contracted with HIV. That means the diagnosis for a woman or man is every two minutes. Last year, 1 million people died from the virus or related illnesses. So Kelly Rowland is actually partnering with Johnson & Johnson and she wants people to go online and basically share a video of which HIV awareness. So you could just talk about, you know, the importance of getting tested and things of that nature. And she wants you all to go and post that video actually on makehivhistory.com. And you can actually go on there and just post the video. And what I wanted to basically talk about with the disease is knowing your number. How many people have you been with? Do you, have you been tested? For me, um, the body is a temple, so I always like to know if I'm dating, when I was dating, okay, what's your number? Even if I wasn't doing anything with that person, how many people have you been with? Um, have you been tested? Because you never know just because you're kissing someone, you don't know if they have the disease or not. We don't even know if you can get it from really kissing. But if someone has a scar on their lip and maybe the blood is so little you can't see it and you kiss that person, you don't know what you're kissing or you don't know their history enough to know, okay, this person may have a disease that you're unaware of. And for me, talking about it is just something that I've actually seen. I had a friend when I was younger that actually had AIDS. She didn't have HIV. She was actually born with AIDS due to some decisions that maybe her parents had made. And she ended up passing away. I think we were in third or fourth grade. She passed away from the disease because back then they didn't have, you know, the medicines and things that they have now. And now there have been more research to, I guess, exactly see how the disease is contracted. But I just wanted to talk about it because a lot of people have fear of knowing um, knowing it. So they, they don't go get tested. But it's very important if you have multiple partners to go out and get tested for the disease. Know your partner's status. If you are going to make that decision, know their history. Also with young teens, he, teens are now being reckless and not knowing what's going on in the world. And they think it's okay to do several different things not knowing what's going on with that person or what's going on with that person's body, what they have, what's going on, they don't know and they're unaware and they're being reckless. So that is why I wanted to basically talk about HIV and the awareness of HIV because a lot of people are unaware of so many different things um, that's going on in the world and they think that they can just go out and do what they want. So that is why I basically wanted to talk about HIV awareness and the importance of going out and getting tested. I also want to talk about the fear, the stigmas, and the knowledge. For African American people, for some reason, they just have a fear of wanting to get tested. I don't know what that is, but you need to get rid of that fear and go out and get tested because African Americans are still in that high number of people that are con getting this disease. So please be cautious of what's going on in the world. Be cautious of what's going on with your partner and know your status. And that's I have a question. Mm -hmm. If you're dating, uh, well, to your point, you were talking about how you know people don't don't want to know their status, right? right? Or they're afraid to know their status. So, but just keep in mind, you have a you know medical history, medical background, and you've seen this stuff straightforward. So to you, mm -hmm. it's like, no, I'm gonna ask these questions. But not just that, you know, growing up with brothers and sisters and a mother that was very strict and didn't play those games. I wasn't a promiscuous person because I've seen so many other things. And when my mother explained to me what that disease was, of course it'll scare you and you don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. But it also made me aware that whenever it came to that point that I need to ask questions to that person, you know, that I'm dating or if I feel like I'm, even if I don't feel like I want to do anything, if I feel like I want to kiss that person, I need to ask, hey, what's your history? What are you doing? What have you done? Have you been tested? Have you really done that? Yeah. Really? 
asked you if you've been tested. That's not a different. That's okay. a different conversation. So, that's a different conversation. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I expect me, you know what I'm saying? Because we're married. Right? That's one of the, we did have that conversation. Yeah, but if I'm dating someone, I'm going to be around. You're going to ask if you're dating them. If you're not, let's say, let's say, let's say there's not sex involved. Because you use the example like, you got to kiss about it, right? You right. ask them? Yes, I do. Oh, that's my body. I didn't know that. I mean, I, I've never my, heard that. I'm just saying this is my body. And if I feel like I'm going to kiss somebody and I don't know what they've done, or where they've been. I'm mm. going to ask that question. Hey, have you been tested recently? Okay, well, before I can even kiss you or anything, I need to know your status. What have you been doing? Do you have a disease? Because you can get, have a disease in your mouth and not even know you have a disease in your mouth. So for me, it's very important. Well, I mean, that that's I why I said questions. I think that it's important to say that you have a medical, you know, the specialization that you did out in Cary because there's a lot of information about that that people aren't aware of. Like you said, like the most I know of a disease of a mouth is mono, right? No, like you but, can have so many different things and that's what I'm saying. in your mouth and not know it. I don't know that. And a lot of people wouldn't know that. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. What if? So now the question boils down to since there's diseases that many people don't know. I mean, of course you know there's uh, things of the mouth. Right. You know, like I think herpes is one of you get herpes in a little. Yes, yes. But this, you, you know that history, you know that information that like you've seen this stuff from patients so right. how can a person even a young person now say okay how how would you suggest them bring it up to somebody how would i suggest them bring it up to somebody mm -hmm. if they just dating someone or if they want to go to the next level or doesn't matter. well you said kissing so yes yeah, I mean, for me simple. i mean you don't know what someone and i don't want to be too but you don't know what someone's mouth has been so if you, I don't care how old you are, it's important because I remember in Virginia, the school my nephew went to, it was a girl in his school mm -hmm. that had HIV. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a 15, excuse me, I'm not, a 15, 16 year old that has a disease that they can't get rid of. Like you have that the rest of your life. So what if she or that? But how do you bring it up though? That's I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm about to get to that okay. point. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you are thinking about that, you first of all, if you're young, you should be going to your parents and asking these questions because now they have taken sex ed out of the schools. Why? I don't know. But a lot of kids are not educated. So if you are thinking about going to that next step, first of all, talk to your parents. I want to make that known. But if you are an adult, when you're dating someone and you feel like, okay, we may move to that next level. I may kiss this person. I've never been the type of person to kiss everybody that I talk to. That's just me. I don't know where your lips been. But I would be like, okay, what, have you been tested recently? And if they say, yes, I've been tested recently. Okay, may I see those documents? And that's just something I would do. That doesn't mean that's something everybody else has to do. Maybe you would trust the person saying they have. But for me, I need to see the papers. And see, okay, you've been tested for X, Y, and Z. Now I can move on to that next step. But if they tell you they've been tested and you don't know they've been tested, then that's a problem. I've seen it working in the medical field where patients have literally asked their partner how they've been tested. And maybe they have been tested. But with HIV and AIDS, it takes up to six months sometimes for Which that disease to, to even read on your on a blood me. draw. So for me... You already got to wait six months before you even have any contact with that person anyway because you don't really know if they if they have it or not. And if they've been with somebody that may have had a disease in the past, you don't know that information. So I would say, okay, if we're going to move to that next level. I need to make sure you're tested. I need to make sure that you don't have syphilis, you don't have herpes, you don't have chlamydia, trichomonosis, HIV. You have to ask those persons that because they need to know their own status. And some people don't care enough to know their status. <laughs> what? Nothing. I, you know, I'm I'm wilding. Why? Because when you named off all those diseases, the the joking part of me was gonna throw out monkey nucleosis. <laughs> uh, you know, mono is mononucleosis. Right? <laughs> is it really? Yes. I did not know that. I wonder if. if uh, <laughs> oh, matter of fact, no, that isn't that. Because in Hey Arnold. I know this is a very serious topic, but that's the thing that popped my mouth. And then I was like, "The monkey nucleosis," but you know, I'm, I'm look. I'm not childish. I'm just having a good time. But that's a very serious thing. Now. And one of the interesting points that you made, which I would like to find the information out, 
Uh, because you said it was, originally you said it was 7,000, is it young women? That's young women. 7,000 young women are contracted with HIV. Every diagnosis, is the diagnosis is coming in every two minutes. If you have 7,000 women a week, then every two minutes somebody is being diagnosed with a disease. And that is mostly women because as a woman, sometimes we trust the other person a little too much and you never know what that man has. I've seen it in working in the medical field where um, a man didn't know he had it. And so the female, because she, a female normally gets checked. The man is not really getting checked. They don't go to the doctor as much as mm -hmm. women do because women just care more. I don't know what's about it. But the woman had came to the doctor and she had a physical and she found out that she had uh, chlamydia. And so her partner ended up coming back and he got tested. And he, you could hear him just saying how sorry he was because he didn't know. So imagine what if that was HIV? What if that was AIDS that he gave to somebody that he really cared about? You know, that's, that's a sad story. Uh, I wanted to talk about this because some reason it, the comment didn't come up on the screen. Um, but Miss Chris, Chrissy Hill stated that um, there is actually medication now for people who participate in reckless sexual behavior for preventing people from contracting HIV. Of course, nothing is 100%, but it is prescribed and it's called PrEP. And she also said that it's always, as always, prevention is better than a cure, but people are not aware that it exists. Hmm. And Miss Sharika. Reed Shakira. Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> I would say more team. But, but I think, again, it's, it, like you said, it, it's just same, it's genuinely a great conversation mm -hmm. because when you do look at the numbers, I'm going to have to go back and look at the numbers. Either way, you know, 7,000. I don't care women. if it's 7,000 men or women. That's my point. I don't care. That is a lot of that's people. So, that's a week. That is a lot of people. That's in one week. And it's, it's just an unfortunate situation. And that's just unfortunate. Good so, morning, everyone. That I and, and let me say this. Let me say this. I'm going to say this. I was a young man practicing in reckless behavior. Okay? I'm going to... Because we, we talk about being honest. I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I was one to practice reckless behavior. Really reckless behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very important. I, honestly, I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Look, it is, <laughs> it is nerve-wracking because once you... When I originally, you get, it's nerve wracking to think like, man, I could have something, and you have right. to keep going to get checked after mm -hmm. you do things. That junk is nerve wracking. It's, right. It brings an anxiety on you mm -hmm. that I've never heard someone say for, for me personally. And I'm gonna let y'all know, doing that on a consistent basis, it brings a real anxiety on you because I hate. It. I'm like, man, I'm like, okay, I I went and did this with this young lady. Dang, nah, I don't know this girl. Let me go and get checked. And that, for one, it costs, okay? That just adds up. Mm -hmm. But two, it's, it's, it's an anxiety because you really have to think like, oh, what if I got something? Mm -hmm. You know, what if, what if I got it? Like, that is a situation that I lived through and I don't want that on nobody. That is a true nerve-wracking situation to right. like, constantly have to go and get tested and make sure that you're good. Mm -hmm. And it's just not a pleasant feeling. It's really not. And right. That's what really helped me calm down because I'm like, nah, I don't like that. Don't right. Like that. And for some people, they they think it's a joke. Um, some people think it's a joke and they find it funny that they have to keep going to a doctor and they have all these diseases. That's that's not a joke. You are putting you are putting people's lives in danger when you don't care enough about your own life. And I think it's very important that you know your you know your statistics on yourself. Because you can say, okay, I've been with this person, I've been with that person. And some people, even when you're in college, they just be doing the most. And you don't know what somebody else has. For me, I'm just, I'm going to be straight up. I was scared to do anything because I'm like, man, all these diseases. And you look in that little pamphlet my mom gave me, no, thank you. But everybody didn't have that experience where somebody gave you something to look at. And you're like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And for me, that was a very scary situation, just looking at pictures of it and not even being physical with anybody but just looking at pictures of something that you can get in your mouth or whatever the case may be so for me and I'm I only laughing, you that. no but I'm only laughing because you know I'm very now you know me you know me so I'm super self-conscious about my lips mm -hmm. like, I really am like I don't like them crusty I don't like me I don't like either. none of that so like 
I don't have to talk. Yeah, my lips are in jewel. And so, you see, that's the first thing you see. Yeah, so if I kiss somebody, I mean, I really love you. Like, I'm not just going to kiss somebody just mm-hmm. because we're talking and we went on a date. I'm just, just that's just me. Um, <laughs> my and my sister, is, my sister laughs at me because she's the same way. I'm like, mm, I'm going to kiss that person. Um, we could date for like six months and I'm not kissing you because your lips might look a little suspect. But that's just <laughs> my perspective. <laughs> Well, look, we're going to move on, but I, the last point I do want to say morning, about everyone. this, and, it, and thank you for talking about this, um, and one point you made was knowing your number. Look, if you're going to be reckless, and this is something I personally did, you better know your number. I, like I said, I definitely agree with that. I think it's foolish, idiotic, ignorant, and foolish, because foolish is an overarching thing. I think it's just so stupid for male or female to not know your number. I mean, the least you can do is at least go write the names down. And if you want to get really specific, write the names down and the date beside their name. You just have to be smart. I mean, I don't think that there's anything nerdy about it. It's really that if you're going to do things like that, which, you know, sadly we are in the world, I've done it, where we are in this world and it's continually growing. Mm -hmm. But at least write your numbers down. I mean, geez, how stupid do you have to be if someone asks you how many people you have slept with and you say, I don't know. You know, and that's if you decide to tell them. There's a big conversation people have whether you should tell them or not tell them. But the conversation isn't about whether you tell them or not. The conversation is, do you know? And if you don't know, you know, you're stupid. You're stupid. Sometimes I get offended by that question. Um, females stupid. may get offended by that question as well. Well, I think, I think some people just be asking just to try to know. Like, I used to be asked that question in college. I was like, how many people, why do you need to know that? I don't need to, I don't even, we're not cool like that for even need to know this information. But I know at the end of the day, I know that information. At the end of the day, it's stupid. And I'm talking to the men, because she can talk to the women. But it's stupid if you don't know your number. I mean, right. that's stupid. And that's a stupid move. So you have to be a little more smarter than that because if you can drive to the store and go purchase the condoms to be able to use if you're, then you, using, if them. you're using them then you then you might as well write down who it is go home put it in your phone do something that way you have a log of this information i just think that's the smartest thing because you sound stupid if you say i don't know right so I and um know. good morning first to tom say no i didn't get to get to her comment and Christy also said it's glorified to be irresponsible, unfortunately. And I have this seen that in a lot of males for some reason. I don't know why it's so many men that I can are, tell you what. That are um, just irresponsible on that level. And they think it's a joke. And when I say that, it's because I've seen people literally laugh that I've had several diseases and they're coming back to get tested again. And you've had all these diseases and you just don't care enough about your life or the person that you're with because... There's no cure right now for HIV or AIDS. They're working on a cure. But if you're just sitting here being reckless, one day you are going to get that because you have so many partners. You don't know. You're getting it mixed up of who you slept with on what day, what hour. You don't even know. You may sleep with multiple people in one day, which is disgusting, by the way. But I've seen people that have done that. And I'm just like, what's wrong with you? Like, you don't care enough about your life as a man to... You're not thinking about your life, though. You're not thinking about that. That is ridiculous. You don't even use protection. Like, first of all, let me just say this. Protection, condoms do not protect you against everything. If someone has, and this is going to be a little bit. You're going to have to wrap this up in a little bit. Okay. But condoms do not protect you from everything. I'm not even going to go into it, but I'm just going to say condoms do not protect you against every disease that is out there. Because if you have a disease as as a woman, you can't see the inside of where you're going. So therefore, if you have more protection, you're still not really protected. Just to throw that little nugget out there for you, for those of you that are reckless. What? Condoms don't protect you from everything. Yeah, but what's it? Huh? What? Whatever you just said. Condoms don't protect you. I understand that. But and I said, as a man, you can look and you can see. For a woman, you can't look and see if she has sores or blisters okay, okay. and you can't see okay. that so even Whatever. if you have on protection and you are going there with that woman you can still get that disease 
Well, let's go to the top part of this is that, look, you're not supposed to be doing it anyway. And I completely understand now why, why the father says you shouldn't be doing it because there's so many situations, so many ties that you have with the person, so many mm -hmm. confused emotions. So, and, and then let's not get into how your body reacts just in general. So let's first state that you shouldn't be doing it anyway because again, it's, it's a whole lot of headache. All right. It's a whole lot of headache that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And even when people say they're ready, they're not ready. So let's okay. first state that. No, now it may sound cliche, but it's true. What? No sex is the best provision. Right. So that is the first step. And if you decide to, as we said, as you said, mm -hmm. make sure you ask. Don't be afraid because at the end of the day, that is your body, and your you have to live with simple. yourself after those twenty minutes. Right. And then going to get tested. Being aware of your own personal status. Right. So I thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. And Chrissy states, exactly, condoms are not 100%. Very true.